Welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast. Back with all three of the boys, Mr. Fruit, Robbie V, and Lou Westlow. Today, we're starting on a somber note. We're talking about Mr. Akira Toriyama, the legend himself. Unfortunately, uh, if you haven't heard the news, well, he's up there in the uh, other world station, uh, you know. We uh, also talk a lot about... Actually, we didn't talk about... That is one oh, topic we missed. But we actually get to basically all of our topics this week. I would like you all to be proud of us. Uh, we talked about the Warner yep. Bros. Uh, guys really doubling down on the live service thing, even though it hasn't been going well for them. Uh, I have a little, medical episode in the gym. Rob has a little bit of a story, a short story time about how he thought he was going to die. Uh, and it turned out to be actually, something completely though. different. Uh, he's also back in the gym, so you know he goes a little bit about that. Uh, we talk, we touch on, uh, we actually touch on Bellatro a little bit. Um, Mr. Fruit tells us about how absolutely goaded Shogun is. Bro. Uh, we briefly discuss Dragon's Dogma and Avatar. Uh, Just listen Q&A. to the podcast. You and know why you're Q- here. And then we do <laughs> a little bit of Q and A, and Joey makes an appearance near the end as well. He does. Uh, he is uninvited <laughs> yeah, as usual, but still here. His, his ass most, got cut. Most people listening to this, it's not like they're a new listener. I just find it very unlikely that the people who listen to this podcast are picking like, ooh, they talked about Bellatro this episode. Eh, ooh, I'm not. I feel not like they're that. just more or less just like. I just want to know what's in the po- the episode, but then I'm probably just going to listen to the episode. Maybe you, I'm you wrong. Some people know. are definitely going to skip it. Oh my god! I'm anyways, <laughs> and I've already skipped it. Oh, Joey. Great. oh my god! Man, 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 We're still man, doing man, man. the intro, Joey. You, it, my bad. Guys. You are my so bad. you are so inconsiderate, and he doesn't mute narcissist weirdo. What a what a loser! Anyways, all that more. Much, uh... Watch the podcast. Uh... <laughs> Hi, do you everyone? My name is Mr. Fruit, and welcome back to the GG Over Easy Podcast, episode two hundred and twenty. Shot in the dark. Is that satisfying number. Two twenty. Good even number. I love me some even numbers. Talked about it before. I like to keep the radio station on an even number. I like to count my head on even numbers. Yep, yep, we yep. like even numbers. Just the fact of the world. Another fact of the world is that today is a somber day. Rather, I guess yesterday was, but I woke up to the news. We'll just start off the bat with some sad news that uh, Akira Toriyama has passed away, I think about a week ago, but the news just broke. For those that don't know, the creator of, I know him most well for Dragon Ball, but he's also influenced things like Chrono Trigger. Um, oh, I didn't well, know he, that. Well, he was part of the, part of baking them. I just did Yeah. Um... Uh, I forget what the other. Uh, he there was one the, show uh, before Dragon Ball. I can't remember. Doctor Slump, or Doctor Slump. And he was part of the Drag Quest. Uh, I mean, all of his, the entire art style is mm-hmm. Dragon Quest is by him. Is um, that a Nintendo sixty four game with like a weird looking short kind of you stubby don't know dude? Or Dragon crazy? Quest. You would know it if you right? up. Let me look. Because you, like me, at one point you didn't know they were by Akira Toriyama and you're like why do they look so much like Dragon yeah, Ball yeah exactly and then you find out oh, oh yes okay yeah yes okay so that would be why um yeah passed away I believe today I think it was 68 and man just sad news um big influence for me especially as a kid I mean all of us here I know have watched Dragon Ball but you know it goes yeah. all the way back to Toonami days I can remember uh, getting up Saturday mornings, watching some new Dragon Ball. Um, in fact, one of my earliest memories of art is I had the Brawley movie on VHS, and I would just pause it at random points in the movie and then just draw, try and draw the, the still frames of whatever part of the movie was, drawing Goku. There was like second grade in the cafeteria, I was drawing Goku at lunch. And this uh, janitor came by, just gassed me up. I was like, oh my God, that is so good. It was horrible. 
like that is so <laughs> great like you're such an artist you're gonna do so great still like the the best memory of art like no one's ever gassed me off that much it was all because yeah. i was drawing goku and did he know it was Goku, or was it just kind of like a like he was gassing you up because he just was a she was drawing? Oh. You know, normalize female janitors. You're I don't right. know why I remember it was a her anyway, but uh, no, it was just drawing. I don't think they knew what it was, but they're just they're just being nice. Yeah, I'm a little kid, supportive. Yeah, and I have all those memories. Come hang on with my friends, and then I think yeah. what were you? realizing today too is just like the impact he had especially dragon ball across the world that like you don't necessarily see all the time but like true it's everywhere especially i'm sure it's different for uh women like i know a lot of girls probably don't didn't grow up with dragon ball quite as much i definitely think it's more male dominated but like i could go to most dudes around my age and say like Kamehameha or do a comment and they would know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, beyond yeah. that, my mom knows what a Kamehameha is. My dad knows what Super Saiyan is. It's impossible to overstate yeah. the impact Toriyama had. Not just in like the anime and in manga sphere, which by the way, he's he's one of those people that just completely changed the course of where those things went. I mean, you would not have you wouldn't have anime being the global, you know, it wouldn't have the global reach it does today without Dragon Ball, like, starting Not that global shot. reach on its own, right? Like, I mean, Dragon Ball transcended, from an anime perspective, like, what anime could do. And then it yeah. really, like, paved the way for every other show. I mean, you wouldn't have any of the modern shonen without Dragon Ball, without Goku. It's, it's crazy because you saw so many, um, so many creators in Japan talk about how, like, they were influenced. I mean, every... Again, it's impossible to overstate, like, basically every single show you watch or watched or watching today is in some way influenced by Dragon Ball especially when it comes to art style. I think, um, like, even Pokemon, right? Like, Sugimori's art style was inspired by Akira Toriyama. I keep thinking about it, like, the, the Latin American influence. Like, Goku is... Yeah, and the videos I see of that, I never realized until like I, a couple months ago. I didn't either. Yeah. I could go down the street to the, to the fucking Fruteria, which literally just dessert or fruit shop you probably you probably see the very illegal uh but the advertisement has like <laughs> goku yeah. in like uh 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 a mexican flag gi <laughs> as the as the as the mascot for this for this little shop like it's i don't know it's just crazy to see and obviously like in global pop culture like he's eternally influenced it because maybe yeah it's like fruit said maybe you don't immediately see it but especially with dudes like i you ask any nfl player and they'd be like oh dude goku goku's part of my inspir goku's part of my workout inspiration mm -hmm. uh you ask um the amount of people at the gym i randomly see wearing like dragon exactly keys and stuff you, I mean, even in like, you know, our American Hollywood, there's so many, so many references to Dragon Ball, uh, in, especially in, in American cartoons, so much of America's cartoon culture is directly influenced by Dragon Ball. It, it's just, it's just crazy to think about someone who is so influential like it's you don't really have someone someone like that does not come along often where they really do change yeah. the course of of history when it comes to entertainment as a whole so it's just sucks it well, for, uh, awful. 
go ahead, Ron. I think for I think for me, like I really didn't, you know, I loved Dragon Ball Z like growing up as a kid. Like that was like Christian said, Toonami getting out of school and just having some sort of hopefully I can get the chronological order. You know, sometimes you miss <laughs> an episode type of thing. Uh, but it would literally be like the highlight of my day. Um, I didn't it, you know, I was streaming uh Baller Tro or whatever yesterday when the news kind of broke. Um and we were like kind of talking about it and i just don't think like i really realized like how much of my childhood revolved around dragon ball z you know i made friends because of dragon ball z you know i would i would sit in the bathroom alone going like this because <laughs> i had blonde hair and i literally <laughs> wanted to go super saiyan so badly like that was like my dr- like if you t- if I if you asked me what my dream was from the age of like eight to probably age 16, it would probably be to become a Super Saiyan um, and somehow do that. And kind of like what Christian and uh, Blue said, you guys were saying just kind of like the impact it had on like everybody and all kinds of cultures, you know, um, it, it's just really, really unfortunate and really sad um, that, you know something that was so big in my childhood and even like kind of now, you know, I don't watch a lot of super or anything like that. Um, But just the magnitude of, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to watch my hero if Dragon Ball never existed. You know, there's just so many catalysts that started from Dragon Ball. Uh, It's just a really sad loss. Well, the part of the thing too, about not realizing how much of an impact he had the like official Chinese government, made a statement uh like mourning the loss of akira toriyama and china and japan like hate each other essentially and they talked about how he like he did more for like bridging foreign relations than because goku and dragon ball is even just a huge icon over in china around the world um the mangaka blues how you say it or whatever but the creators of like um i think it was both Naruto and One Piece already issued a statement, but they've been public about how for the longest time, the only reason they started was because of Toriyama. And that's like two of the three, aside from Dragon Ball, biggest manga back in the day. You had One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach, which uh, the artist for Bleach went on to say too that like while he wasn't directly inspired, Toriyama helped him actually like keep Bleach going and stuff. So it's just crazy to think that like it all stemmed from that. And then the dude was still just still making so much stuff. Uh so many projects in the works. Not just Dragon um, Ball, so and he never like he could have just chilled, but he just loved making, creating and Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just had that creativity bug and just wanted to give people, you know, something to escape, which you know I respect a lot. Sad news. It's so so funny thinking about it because I I remember watching One Piece clips, and it's funny how much like that show and all the people who work on that show. Uh, I guess not just reference, but um, like pay tribute to the show, pay tribute to Dragon Ball as a whole. Because, like, uh, there's so many, so many things that One Piece does that just, like, to the, to the, to the fighting style, to the, to, 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 it's, like, when I'm watching the show, they're straight up using, like, Dragon Ball sound effects in so many fights. And, and it's, like, it's not a ripoff, it's, it's just them paying tribute to the goat like like when it comes especially when it comes to dragon ball fight choreography like that oh all over they each hit a punch and it's like all over sound ever all over anime and i don't know it's just yeah just like that the the clash yeah that that speed clash (laughs) i saw a clip and that's reminded me too of um, apparently it was somewhere in Mexico, but it was, uh, during like the finale premiere of Dragon oh, Ball Super yeah. and they had like, 
like the whole city practically shut down. They yeah, had they a giant had projector parties. and people just, yeah, giant crowds of people just watching, getting hyped. Crazy. Yeah. Even crazier too that Super ended like seven, eight years ago. We still don't have anything, but um, six, years ago. six years, seven. Don't don't hurt me. Don't make me feel yeah, that old. It's just, it's just like, it does not feel like that long ago, but yeah, it's just crazy and remind you how uh, bleeding life is, but it's crazy too. Cause when I heard the news, I didn't know how old he was. So I figured he was older, but 68 isn't like, apparently it was my, my dad's um, 62, man. Like, come on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I forget what it was, but apparently it was some sort of uh it's young hematoma or something, but Possibly had to do with some sort of injury he received, but either way, unfortunate news. Um, but needless to say, his his legacy is going to live on. Yeah, um, Dragon Ball is going to be around to stay. It's I've been rewatching the Lord of the Rings, and it kind of reminds me in the same Lord of the Rings what it did to fantasy because I forget about that until I like hear, read, and look more into like Lord of the Rings. Pretty much everything we know about fantasy, or like you think of a fantastical world right now, because of Lord of the Rings. Like it all stemmed from Lord of the Rings, the world, the creatures, the myth, and then it all just sort of stemmed from that, but like the progenitor or whatever of that entire genre. Sort of yeah. the same way like uh, Dragon Ball is with Shonen, but also a lot of anime and stuff, manga, where... No matter what, even if people don't realize it and they're iterating on stuff, they're iterating on something that was iterated on Dragon Ball, stuff like that. So, yeah. It's crazy. Pay my respects. Um, and appreciate what he did. For generations to come, you know, it's. Yeah. And it, it's just like Fruit said, it's going to be. So often it'll be subtle where there are, you know, the tributes to Dragon Ball are so just like, you know, glancing you know, a quick little, quick little reference here and there, but it just shows how far reaching and how much it means to so many creators and will continue to mean to so many creators across the world. So yeah, rip to the goat. That man is a legend. This episode of the GG Over Easy podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives at wishing we had more time. How we can best use the time we have now. If you're standing in your own way, then move out of the way and learn how you can live through therapy. My time with BetterHelp, they showed me how to live my life and not just think about all the problems that I have. Instead, how I can tackle those problems and live life to the fullest. BetterHelp is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire. BetterHelp will get you lined up with a brand new therapist, and, or you can switch therapists at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com GG today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash GG. Again, that's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash G G. It's that time again. Factor is back, baby. Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. It is so delicious. You guys just have to try it. Every meal is fresh, never frozen. They're chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. And did you know there's 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up during the long day? So stop waiting. Get started today and get after your goals. Guys, it's ready in two minutes. You can fuel up fast with restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat up and eat whenever you are. Sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitianary approved to not only be nutritious, but also delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash gg50 and use code gg50 to get 50% off. That's code gg50 at factormeals.com slash gg50 to get 50% off. Speaking of Japan, since we're regionally there right now, Rob, I don't think Blue has Rob. Have you seen Shogun? 
I have not. I actually uh, was planning on getting the episodes, you know, a little have a catalog ish and then uh, um, finishing that. Uh, I'm currently watching Flight of the Bumblebees. So. What's that? That's the master. That's it's called Master of Flights. I just call it Flight of the Bumblebees because it's fun, but it's on Apple TV and it's like World War Two and it's like bomb. It's like about just follows like a. Uh, a bombing brigade essentially uh, in okay. world war two. And it's like Austin Butler's in it. It's a great show. I actually it's, really like it. Uh, Austin Butler's in it. Uh, he's hot. Yeah, he's hot right now. First he's so June. hot. Well, no, but I mean both. I mean, he's hot uh, right now and he's <laughs> hot. Like, um, well, I have seen all current episodes, three episodes of Shogun. Mm-hmm. Banger alert. Oh my God. It is everything I ever wanted it to be. People keep relating it to game of Thrones. Um, but I think I the, hate that I think the director made a better uh, comparison, comparison, and I think I would agree. Yeah, imagine more like uh, feudal Japan Succession or House of Cards. Much more political. I like House. Yeah. Okay. And I'm here for it. It's so sick. the The person who ended up directing this, I guess, it's uh, a remake of. I don't know if it was a series or a show, a while, like in the 70s or something in Japan called Shogun or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so they're remaking it, so to speak. But the the director wanted it to be as like historically accurate, like he wanted um, to expose like Western audience and stuff to like a genuine, true look into what Japan looked like at the Beautiful time. Japan. He also refused to cast any Japanese actor unless they're actually Japanese like you wanted to give them all their due and stuff and so you'll see Claire, Claire is like why are they all speaking Japanese but 90% of the show is uh, subtitled uh, subtitled because yeah um, there are like English speakers who, who are speaking Portuguese but they speak English in the show but the Japanese are always speaking Japanese um, plus one of the big factors with some of the people you see is translation not yeah. being able to understand each other so it also makes more sense that helps portray it better but man i'm a big fan i love what they're doing it's like yeah. just i saw a he, guilty pleasure i saw hito uh i i have it the tweet right here actually uh hio kojima actually tweeted about it about three days ago i don't know if you saw this and it was uh, like a paragraph which means he likes it yeah, oh, exactly yeah. exactly he's not like went to see barbie <laughs> yeah exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> i saw barbie uh, in theaters yeah, uh, oh, or, or, I think it was like seeing Madam Web or something like yeah, that. No, he literally, he literally just tweeted, <laughs> he literally just tweeted, saw Madam Web today. That was it. <laughs> yeah, that's his way uh, of said, saying it was not good. He said, The Shogun we were so crazy about 42 years ago, uh, Anji san is back. The scale, details, cast, costume, set, props, and VFX are all top notch, and it's no exaggeration to say that this is a Game of Thrones set in 17th century Japan. It is the most faithful to the original story than its histor to historical fact, but even those who don't know the original story (parentheses the original) uh, will be captivated by its charm. The presence of uh, Hirokio, I'm gonna fuck this up, as Toranja Toranaga, uh, who uh, replaces Toshirio Muf uh, come on, man, I'm, I'm the worst. <laughs> yeah, also yeah. plays a role. Uh, this is not an Im important movie. This is a drama. This drama will be a black ship that will capture the future of Japanese film industry loaded with Hollywood's wa parentheses harmony. Yeah, I think so, that was part of it is like bringing Hollywood into authentic like Japanese culture and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm here for it. Um, I think the comparisons to Game of Thrones are just because it's like it's an epic, but in this yeah. case, historical piece. There's no fantasy elements. Like, make no mistake, this is like yeah. true to the time. Like, the, you know, no fantasy elements. No one's like, like riding tiger, like a giant right. flying tiger type of thing. It's all grounded. Um, but I think like the scale and just what they're going for as far as like, I think like a TV event sort of thing. I think people are relating to Game of Thrones. But yeah, I think it's the wrong idea when people hear Game of Thrones, because then they think more so about fantasy. like genre, yeah, like fantasy or these certain things, and it's much more political and um, 
much more grounded, but yeah, I am cannot gush enough. Huge fan. Can't wait to see where it goes. I'm just upset. They dropped two the first week and now they're doing weekly releases. Um, and I know why they're what doing days? it. Uh, I think when maybe Tuesday, it, it releases like Tuesday. Oh, okay. It's like a random time. kind of day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or at least when it comes to I figured to it'd be like a Sunday type of thing where it's like. That's like middle of the week. Watch. Yeah. And you so, watch it on FX or Hulu? Like what is. Hulu. Okay. We watch it on Hulu. And yeah, I'm just upset that we have to wait weekly, but I also get it. I know why they do it. Especially I like if like Hulu's weekly. trying Especially to. Especially something more. like this. Yeah. More, more of an event. And it's sick. Again, cannot gush enough about it. Um, and then lastly, while well, I guess we're still uh, talking about Japan, I'm telling you guys, keep it on your radar. I mentioned it before. I think people are like a couple days after release, it's going to start picking up and people are going to be like, uh, oh, sheesh, have you played Dragons Dogma 2? I'm telling you. When does that come bang. out? In, like next week, right? No, March 22nd. Oh, which okay. So a little bit later. I'm having an internal meltdown because the uh -oh. same day, uh, the Ronin it's game Destiny. on PS5 comes oh. out. No, not the yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> Destiny. No, um, Rise of the Ronin, I believe is what it's called, and it's released on PS5, and that's coming out the same day. I don't want to play them both, but I think I'll probably play Dragon's Dogma two first. The more I see about it, the more it looks so good. Um. And again, I think it's being slept on. People are slowly. It's an RPG, right? Like a, like a. Um, yeah, more or less. It's exactly Skyrim is esque, if you will. Eh, kind of, like, like, um, a little darker in tone, but still fantasy. Um, flashy combat, but not over the top. Um. Because the person has worked on both Dragon's Dogma and the first one, obviously, and then Devil May Cry, and they're taking all that stuff together. Um, but it's more like grounded, sort of more like Souls-like combat, um, but much more minimalist and uh, like player-driven exploration. Like it's not handholdy. It has, I think I talked about it before, but the whole pawn idea where like you create an NPC to follow you around and they learn as you play and then you recruit other people's pawns who can help you out and give you like info if they've done these kind of missions before or like the more they fight a certain enemy the better they live at fighting at that enemy and it looks freaking sick uh so yeah just keep your eyes peeled because i think it's going to be a bigger hit uh than just like because the first one was sort of like a cult classic and we kind of liked it but He's doing this one to really deliver on the entire idea he had in the first place. And yeah, I think it's gonna be sick. So watch out for that. But other things people have been gushing about and picking up steam. In fact, so much so that I guess you streamed it yesterday, Rob. I uh, did. Bellatro. I think that's how you said. I don't actually know. Yeah. What'd you uh, think? So Dado comes to us before D&D. And he goes, Rob, uh, I'm surprised like you're not playing Bolotro. And I was like, I see it. I, I love poker. Like, I think poker is a lot of fun. Uh, and I don't know. I just hadn't tried it. And I played. I was like, OK, let's just play like two runs and then I'll, we'll go to bed. Like, I just kind of want to, you know, learn the game. Uh, had this sick flush deck that I built. Well, okay, like, first of all... Well, that's the problem, though, is... I think everyone flush is a little overpowered. Yeah. Or just everything else is way too inconsistent, but... Yeah. Um, so, for those that don't know, Balatro is this roguelike deck-building type of game, if you will, um, that basically just gives you a normal deck of cards, and you try and just create the best poker hands each hand with let's say three discards as well. And you just basically try and get a high score and you have jokers that give you multipliers. Uh, you have like booster packs that give you like little boosts and stuff like that. 
And as you go on, uh, you get new difficulties, new decks that unlock, new jokers that unlock. Um, and it's it's weird. It's like one of those games where it's like, it's more addicting than fun, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, I'm having fun. Isn't that sort of like gambling? I'm a, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's weird. Like, it's like more fun addicting than it is fun Monkey like big number i'm telling you yeah, well that's what and then like well and then like it it just has like a great little soundtrack the, the soundtrack that has it is just one of those kind of gaming little background noises that you just never get sick of and then it also just has the most satisfying that, that's my score going up by the way okay uh just the sounds of the score going up. And then you can also like make the game go faster too. Like if the, the game is a little slow for you, you can like make the speed times four. So it's like, it's, it's just a lot of fun. I, I mean, it's not fun. It's addicting. I have fun while doing it, but I would say it's more addicting than it is fun, but that's not saying it isn't fun. If you know what I mean? Like this is, this sounds okay. really, this that sounds like an oxymoron. Uh, but uh it's it's awesome it's a lot of fun i really am excited to try to beat all the difficulties that's kind of like what i'm at right now uh because every deck you get and it's as small as you get one more discard or you get one more hand to play in a thing uh all the way to like decks that are like start with a cosmic telescope and start with a like so and then each of those decks have a variety of difficulties that you can go through as well um Dado was showing me this thing called endless mode where it is when you beat like the original like rounds or whatnot and then you go into endless mode where it's basically you know the scores get way higher oh, okay nice i got up to i think uh i needed to match the blind was like 250 million or something oh dang and yeah you got higher than me I was and like Zoom and I had this. Great... Yeah, probably. It was something yeah. really high. And the yeah. funny thing too was uh one card. My build was a single card, any card, and I cleared every single one. You just play high card? Yeah. That's cool. And I always I wondered like how the like high millions card millions and millions. Work. I had just an insane run. Uh yeah. It was just stupid. But yeah, I, I played it, I don't know, it was last time I played it. Closer to release. It's been out I think a couple weeks now. I'm trying to see if Steam will tell me. Um I haven't had time to play it since, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. Um the the roguelike progression, like Rob mentioned it, there's no meta progression making you like stronger in between rounds. It's more like into the gungeon and stuff where you just unlock new stuff to find in new runs. Like new yeah. jokers and blah blah blah. I also should oh. say there's like a gold economy as well that the game is kind of based around too, that you have like interest and that, you know, that, that scratches my little TFT economy brain. Yeah, uh, so so well, I like that a lot. That's part of the build I had. Yeah. I had like hundreds of gold every single round. Yeah. Um, uh, last I played was February 22nd, which I oh, realize now is March. A while then. Yeah. March 8th. So I, over two weeks ago. And then I think I played a couple days after which I think it's been out about three weeks. Um, yeah, super fun. I think it's just it is also on the Switch too. I think it's also just kind of one of those games that very easy to understand too. Yeah, very easy to understand and very easy to like. Oh, like I want to play a quick thing before I go to bed. But then before you go to bed, then it's now you're like. Quick. <laughs> but then you lose like right before, or you finish a good endless run. You're like, ah, like I got like, what's another one? Like what's another run? Because uh, like I would literally like finish the run. And then I like lose or something like that. And I'm like, all right, last one. I swear this is my last, <laughs> this is the last run going into it. And then I lose again. I'm like, all right, really? This is actually like, the okay, last but, one. but like, like this time? Yeah. Like this is like the last one for real. Like I swear. Yeah. I think like the, the deck that I really had fun with was like this full house deck where I had jokers that were like, if you play a 10, it adds chips to you and like a 4X multiplier or a four. And then I had another one where it was like, if you play like, even cards like two, four, six, eight, ten. Uh, you get like multipliers added to that as well. Uh, so I was basically just running like a full house deck where I would try and get all my fours and tens. Uh, 
and just playing that over and over and over again. And like you said, with the flush deck, the flush decks are really easy to like fall in love with, but I've noticed with those full house or like the flush decks, it's really hard to break a million points with those decks. Uh, it, you it, need a better kinda, build, but it's so consistent it, though. Yeah, it's really consistent if you want to, you know, get to anti like eight every time. Uh, but if you really want to try and like push the limits of a deck, which I think the most fun part is the endless mode where you really try and get those crazy numbers. I mean, Dado showed me, I think it was like anti 13 where the boss was like 1.8, uh, zero E to the 11th power. Yeah. Which I don't even know like how the high scaling was insane. Cause like anti 11, it was like 5 million. I'm like, sweet, easy. Yeah. And the next small blind on like anti 12 was like a hundred million. Thing. I'm like, yeah, okay, and it just just <laughs> freaking, yeah, it, it scales massively, which is uh, which is really cool. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's really addicting. Uh, you know, maybe I am having fun with it and not just thinking it's addicting. Um, <laughs> because I, and like you know, what I think is great about it. It'll teach people how to play like five card stud. Uh, for those that don't know and always have wanted to kind of learn how to play poker. Um. So it might be a good and a bad thing now I think about it. Uh, but uh, very Helps addicting. Gamble without actually gambling. So. True. Uh, it's just a very simplistic game. And, and I, I think that's the beauty of it. You know, you go into it and you could basically do, I'm going to do flush every time. And you could, you know, you could try and force flush every time. But I think the fun in it for me is trying to find those like weird little niche ones where it's like, Oh, I I can play this try and run straights now because I have a joker that lets me skip a number in a straight. So now I'm trying to do these like straight flush deck type of things. Um, I mean, you are you are summing up every roguelike pretty much. Maybe you should check out some more roguelikes, especially deck builders. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, Join Slay me. the Slay the Spire is one of my favorite uh, in that genre, and I feel like well, this is the genre yeah and I, I feel like this is like that for me is like almost a quicker slay the spire i feel like slay the spire is a little bit more of a can commitment. definitely take a while yeah um and i feel like with slay the spire you could get halfway through a run and you know like this deck is not gonna really like go anywhere um like i'm not gonna be able to beat the triangle circle guy and then like go into endless mode and try and then get the red screen key the green key and the blue key yeah sorry if you've yeah. never played slay the spire it's really fun though <laughs> it um know. yeah i'm sounding i'm just speaking gibberish um but all in all if you really like roguelikes and you enjoy mr fruits videos on like his roguelikes have you made a video on this are you planning on well doing something with it i recorded it two weeks ago <laughs> i haven't done <laughs> uh it's gonna go up on uncut i've uploaded a couple of videos of mr fruit uncut last week week and a half People are curious. Yeah. Uh, one was just some hell divers we did, but then two of them were roguelike stuff. I'm not posting anywhere else. And there's actually going to be another one soon. Because all the indie roguelike stuff, I'm just going to be putting there since it won't be going on the main channel for now. Yeah. Um, and the main channel might not have an upload until I finish this Power World video, which God hopes is soon. Should I hopefully be early next week? It will be the bane of my existence. Um, <laughs> But I'm hoping whenever it goes live, people like it. Um, but you mentioned it was on Switch, and that just reminded me, Switch Games downloaded uh, this last night. It came out Unicorn today. Unicorn Overlord. Okay, yeah. Why are you playing a game called Unicorn <laughs> Overload? I have no idea why it's ca called that. Um, <laughs> okay, so no unicorns were involved in the making of this game. I don't game. think so. It's such a strange name. But it's... Um, like a tactical turn-based JRPG um, sort of seems to be similar in the veins of stuff you'd see with like Octopath Travel or Triangle Strategy and stuff. Um, actually sponsored a recent video too, uh, which was Pog. So I'm like, all right, well, all right. it was just like I'll a little 60-second thing. Yeah, and I was like, okay, sweet. Those yeah. are the like best ones. It's like I play that. Like I yeah. So, uh, yeah, it comes out today. It's going to be the first game I've played on Switch and... And it's like specifically Forever. for the Switch? Like it's not on anything else? It might be coming to other consoles. I'm not sure. Actually, I think it, it might. Um, but in this case, if I'm going to do it on console, I'd rather be portable. 
But yeah. I think they talked about how they wanted to do PC, but they partnered, Atlas partnered with VanillaWare or whatever. And VanillaWare just has this weird vendetta against PC and we're like, no PC. Because they hate money, I guess. I don't really know. <laughs> um, but excited to play that because, yeah, I, I just don't play. Like, if I'm going to play a game, I'm already at my house. And I'm like, well, I might as well just play it on my PC. Because the other thing, too, is I can't multitask. People who like play a game and watch a show or like do this and that, I I can pretend, one but I'm going to do one of the other. Yeah, like I'll be watching a show, but if I'm playing, but it'll be an hour and I couldn't tell you a single thing that happened. Or I'll get distracted by the show. Next thing you know, I haven't touched the game at all. There's yeah. no in between. So then I'm, I'm usually like, well, why wouldn't I play it on PC? So 99.9% of the games I play end up being PC. on PC. So yeah. Um, quite excited to get to that when I can. Um, speaking of gaming though, on the go, you know, some mobile games and whatnot, Warner Brothers released, uh, I don't know if it was an exact statement or oh, God. it was their C's. Some executive, something essentially yeah. said Warner Brothers is doubling down on live Double service game. and mobile games rather Double than their, like triple A single player games. Double right down. after, uh, what did you call it? Just or Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League Floppers. is peaking at like 200 people on PC right now, and it's God. been like a month and a half. Yeah, live service game. So they're like, hey, and then you know what was last year's number one selling video game? I suppose Hogwarts Legacy, a triple A single player game from Warner Brothers. And so, what do they take away from this? Screw that. Let's do more live service game and mobile games. Like how tone well, deaf, man. It's the profit margins, well, right? Because they're just like, oh yeah, God. So well, yeah, we might have made the most money with Hogwarts, but we spent the least money on this live service game. Uh yeah. And uh, speaking of Warner Brothers, I mean that comes off the heels of them shutting down Rooster Teeth. Um uh, which is Sad. pretty which is very sad. Uh, I don't know if you guys were fans of Rooster Teeth. Uh, I wasn't really a Red versus Blue fan. I was more so like a Achievement Hunter Funhouse, but I loved the Rooster Teeth podcast. Um, and that was one of the main like inspirations behind like doing some of this podcasting stuff. And, um, you know, uh, I know a lot of people out there also watch Rooster Teeth. Uh, it's just a very, 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 like I said, like I said with Goku, you know, uh, when I heard that Rooster Teeth was shutting down, you know, I used to dream about being able to like work at Achievement Hunter. And, you know, I kind of do, you know, with the kind of crew that we have now. And it's literally exactly what I wanted to do, what I wanted because I saw people doing it on Rooster Teeth um, and sh sh was shown that it was possible. And obviously, you know, Rooster Teeth has had, you know, its uh, controversies over the years. Um, but I don't think that should take away from all the great things Rooster Teeth did for not just uh, like the videos that they made, but just kind of, you know, the impact it had on other creators. You see, you know, I know Dado watched Rooster Teeth. I'm sure Mr. Fruit even watched a little bit of Rooster Teeth. Blue might have even watched. I watched everything, but I was definitely red versus blue. That's right. Yeah. Did you watch anything Rooster Teeth related, Blue? Um, I was never crazy into it. Uh, I know Achievement okay. Hunter. I definitely saw a couple of those. A lot of people loved Funhouse, and I thought I would love Funhouse. Uh, I I just never fully vibed uh with the whole Rooster Teeth uh thing. Um, but it it's it's you know I still understand the that they're definitely one of the pioneers of having i guess just a, 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 a just a I, just a big cast of people just like doing cool shit you know yeah i mean for me it was like the first time i had like watched video game content other than like the yogs cast i think yogs cast and rooster teeth growing up in like middle school and high school were primarily the youtube videos that i would watch um and even going into like college um you know for the fun house and all that kind of stuff uh, sorry to kind of tangent away from the Warner Brothers thing. I just, uh, but just totally a sad situation over there as well. 
super sad. I, hey, the, they've been a 20, 20 21, years. 21 years. Yeah. Red versus wow. blue too. If, damn. Uh, then it makes you like wonder like if like does Warner Brothers own those kind of rights now? I'm sure like Ruby and Red versus Blue have some sort of like value as you know a, an IP. So I don't know how that'll work, but well, small victory because um, the podcast network is continuing. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. People can get their fix, but I understand like you know like you're not liking Funhouse, especially with something like that that's like personality driven. You don't vibe with a lot of people, or like, or even just like that. Maybe the way they work, like, you know, like uh, Kai Sinat. I don't know how to say his last name. I think that's I say him. You got it. Okay, so it just reminds me of like people who watch him enjoy the way he interacts, and it's just chaotic. And for me, I'm like, that's just I can't handle that. That's a lot. But then, yeah, some people might like. I don't know, like us at this point. We're more we're more toned down and less crazy for instance like in this podcast or sometimes it's just the energy sometimes it's the personality sometimes it's as a whole um i know i personally too when i watch stuff i don't like it when there's too many people like too many cooks usually it i can't pay attention and it just becomes like chaos um yeah. like as much as i wanted to i've been trying to like listen to uh ludwig's podcast called the yard they uh. recently had I have the same problem. Yep. They recently had one with like Hank Green. I'm like, these are weird worlds coming together. I want to listen to this. And I just couldn't get through it because it just there's like five normal posts or whatever. And then Hank Green. And so the, it's just a lot of talking, interjecting over, uh, which like I'm sure isn't necessarily a problem. But for me, I'm like, I can't follow any of this. And it's just like, it's too much for me. So, but it's also a really successful podcast. So there's a lot of people who like that or like, oh, I like all the, or hearing from everybody or, you know, I think that just, that's content, you know? Yeah. Um, speaking of content, you missed <laughs> out on making some Overwatch 2 content, Rob, because oh, God. you, uh, well, I'm interested to hear how you managed to destroy your body with a pre-workout oh. i'm so interested in this because you because i was like the ah uh, let's go rob when you were talking about going to the oh. gym and then not even like 10 hours later this dude's like oh. i did something wrong oh dude it was bad like it okay i thought okay <laughs> can i guess what happened yeah go ahead okay I think you went zero to a hundred. Yep. Okay. You immediately were like, I got to start working out right at six there. o'clock. Right there. No, I got to, I got to no. get into this. And I got a two hour, two hour gym uh, session, baby. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. And I so, need everything. So let's get some pre-workout. Yep. And you also are like, I've never taken this full scoop. Let's go. At the very least. Let's go. Okay. That's so, how I think it started. Yep. Okay. So I agree. Uh, Monday happens. I have a midlife crisis. Okay. Which is basically. I find I mean, out, you know, maybe maybe we need to like quit being a lazy piece of shit and go to the gym. Cause uh, Warren, uh, spoiler guys, I know Rob hasn't been doing his workout uh, waiting things because I haven't worked out and I'm huge and I don't want to be a disappointment. So I have to just totally avoid it, but I'm not avoiding it anymore because I'm actually going to the gym. But anyways, <laughs> now, so I have a midlife crisis Monday and I'm like, okay, I need to go to the gym. So Christian, I go to your old gym. The OG oh, one yeah. you used to go to. How's that doing? Uh, uh, great, dude. It's still hustling and bustling. You know, it still smell the big, just like the musty biggest sweat. dudes I've ever seen. You know, the biggest dudes. And There's a hundred percent I've ever seen room where somebody is. You know, but um, so uh, I go there, sign up, and, and you know, just bros working there. You know, just absolute bros. And he goes, "Hey, bro, like, so I can hook you up with like a pre-workout thing." And I'm like, Was "Okay, the I really." Dude? No, he's like, he has like curly hair. Uh, uh, so uh, he's like explaining to me like, uh, and like how, like you want to work out and stuff. And for me, I want to go to the gym in the morning and do something hard because I feel like throughout the day I'll feel better. Like, I'll be like, okay, I did that. Like, I feel good. I feel like motivated. I did something I didn't want to do. 
so I could do other things like throughout the day now. Uh, so I buy this pre-workout called Skull, <laughs> uh, Skull Panda something. Okay. And he basically goes, so how's your ink, uh, caffeine intake? And I go, oh, dude, I've been drinking soda for years. Uh, I'm good. You know, <laughs> like, so like, I was like pretty high. Uh-oh. Uh, so oh, no. the, the morning comes and it says one, like, I don't have it with me. Uh, I have the, the free one I got for signing up. I don't know what nice. this is. Um, so I take the pre-workout and uh, it says, you know, you do two scoop or one scoop. Okay. I do about one and a half ish, you know, I do like maybe like one in like a fourth, uh, you know, a I don't Rob's go like Google, Google. A Rob's no, Rob's no, no, I did not. God. No, not with that thing. Not like even I know, you like might've died. <laughs> that's a lot. Like, uh, in the words of 21 Savage, that's a lot. Uh, so I get to the gym and you guys are wrong. I knew that I wasn't, I didn't want to absolutely destroy myself. So I drink like one of the uh, scoop, uh, one scoop worth. Go 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 go. Get to the gym. Oof, all right, like yeah, all right. Like I don't really like feel it. Um, so I run my mile. I run my mile point one twelve. You know that's my warm up. I always try and I always try and have that as my warm up. Um, then I go to the nice little bench, like you know where the barbells kind of are and they also have like a little flat bench and the little the little chair sit in my chair do my little arnold presses i'm pumping i'm owning and i'm i'm getting that jittery feeling like yeah all right my sweat is breaking i'm feeling good <laughs> looking over there a guy benching eight million pounds going <laughs> fuck yeah like this place is sick the bar the bar is just bent yeah like <laughs> for real though there are some huge people in there and uh um, scary yeah, and then I start doing uh, bench uh, with the barbells, but I, I take it at a slow decline, and then boom, like a, a nice explosion. Nice, you know? yeah. Sure. Um, do that set, and then between sets, I'll do the little, the raises, and I'm doing that with like trying to keep my heart rate up and like not have it dip down below so I can keep that like flow or whatever they call it. Um. Basically, we're like you're in that heart rate where you're like burning fat or something, they say. Um, and then I get to uh, the machine where you're doing like chest press, basically. And I like to do like one at a time. So I'll put my hand here and just do one at a time. And I get to my left one. And dog, when I tell you I got like <laughs> the worst and it wasn't like a cramp. It was like, OK, something's wrong with me, like internally, because like it was like a pain, like here on my rib cage but like underneath my rib cage so it's not like a muscle like it's one of my organs yo <laughs> and so like how? i try to push and i'm like damn like this shit kind of hurts and then i'm like oh, let's go shoot maybe i can like push it away with doing abs and then i keep like fucking like pushing my rib like like quit like hurting <laughs> To try and like, you know, like, like, no, no better way to fix a, a like pain. To pop it back or like to pop the organ to do its thing. So I start doing abs and it like hurts. And I'm like, fuck. Like, all right. And then, okay. I got to stop. So I stop. And then like the whole time I'm at home, it's still like a dull pain. It just feels like someone is like, just like poking me right there. And it's not like a sharp pain or anything. So I do what any sane person does. I WMD my symptoms. Uh, you're so, probably dying. <laughs> well, and then uh, I get on this whole thing where it's like, you know, you may have a blood clot. So now I'm like, I'm playing PBE TFT with Sid and some other friends. <laughs> How is and it? I'm it li- it's all right. It's uh, I like it more than Headliner. Um, yeah, I didn't play but, like, any remix, but yeah, there's still like a ton of bugs uh, in the PBE, which is like come to be expected um but it, it's fun uh but like while i'm like playing and everyone's like talking and stuff i'm like doom scrolling my <laughs> symptoms and so i think i have like i'm i'm certain at this point i have a blood clot and it's heading to my lungs uh i can feel so it. i i start like you know when you fixate on something you're like, i'm like holy f-, i'm like starting to like panic like i'm really freaking out um and i would like 
it got to a point where like I would breathe and like as soon as I got to a deep breath, it would be like that dull pain right here. So um, I, w I was dead serious. I was like, all right, Cindy, if I wake up tomorrow and it's still feeling like this, I will go to urgent care. I was like, I will go to the doctor and like figure out what's going on. And she's like, I hope it hurts tomorrow. Like she, she's. I hope it is that. I hope you're still hurting tomorrow, so we can go to the doctor. Um, I wake up that next morning, and bro, when I tell you, I had the Maduris Maserts in out of my butt. God. Like, I, I, I don't know if the caffeine that like was ingested into my body just threw it out of like everything. Um. And then I looked it up and like pre and then like I also noticed too after I took that pre workout, I uh, I'm trying to get like back into my intermittent fasting stuff. So Sydney was reheating her You're panda. So oh, I hate you, man. And You're she so was like, "Do you want like a bite?" And I was like, "I'll have Omega Flex if I have one of those." Like like uh, no. And then so I was like, "Ah, give me one of them chickens. You would." So I take <laughs> one of the chickens. I eat it. One orange chicken, bro. And like I'm telling you, my fucking oh, my ass, my ass are up to here, bro. <laughs> And I'm like, man, like what? Like, why is this happening? And Sydney's like, it's probably that pre-workout shit you were taking that says it gives you cancer on it. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, Sydney like read over the thing in one of the labels. It says like, it has ingredients that knows it causes cancer. And she goes, did you know that? And I was like, no, I just saw like, uh, he just said it hyped me up for working out. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I think, or... so yeah, I have, uh, I am actually going to go to the gym after this podcast. We're going to get back. Uh, nice. Uh, Cause I, I will say I did wake up sore. I didn't like want to absolutely destroy myself. Like you guys thought I was instead. It wasn't the workouts that absolutely destroyed me. It was the pre-workout <laughs> that I took. Uh, oh. And that was my question uh, to you guys is, do you guys take pre-workout before you go and work out or no? No. It I, well, I drink sometimes uh, I'll just drink uh, in advance. I'll get like a, a energy. And then mm -hmm. I don't like chug or anything. I'll sip on it. Like, cause that's the other thing too, is like, wait, eight ounces of focus. I drink in like two hours. I slowly drink that thing. Uh, so I'll have like an hour before I go. And then that's just for the caffeine a little bit, but that's the most I'll do. And then that's pretty much the caffeine I have for my entire day. I usually don't take pre-workout, but if I am having, like, if I'm having a slow day and I still want to work out, I'll, I'll take a pre-workout. Like, I'll, which is usually advanced, or um, I have a bunch of NOCOs, N-O-C-C-O, -C -O, uh, that are really, really good. Um, the, the Raz, Juicy Raz, baby. Uh, really, really good. I, I would say, like, I would say, like, 30% of my workouts I would take. This episode of the GG Over Easy podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. How we can best use the time we have now. If you're standing in your own way, then move out of the way and learn how you can live through therapy. My time with BetterHelp, they showed me how to live my life and not just think about all the problems that I have. Instead, how I can tackle those problems and live life to the fullest. BetterHelp is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire. BetterHelp will get you lined up with a brand new therapist, and, or you can switch therapists at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com GG today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash GG. Again, that's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash G G. It's that time again. Factor is back, baby. Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. It is so delicious. You guys just have to try it. Every meal is fresh, never frozen. They're chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. And did you know there's 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up during the long day? So stop waiting. Get started today and get after your goals. Guys, it's ready in two minutes. You can fuel up fast with restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat up and eat whenever you are. Sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved. 
to not only be nutritious, but also delicious. Head to Factormeals.com slash GG50 and use code GG50 to get 50% off. That's code GG50 at Factormeals.com slash GG50 to get 50% off. Yeah, but so I don't I'm do, looking at here. I don't chug. I don't, like, I, I think a lot yeah, of people... Yeah, see that... I, that I will say, I took my thing and the, the that eight lot, ounce thing, thirty yeah. minutes before. Go! A lot of people make like, the mistake of like just drinking it, like just it's it's more like a, it's more like a take as much as you need as you're doing it. You know what I mean? Like sometimes, sometimes I will. I'll, I'll just like I'll chug like most of the thing before a workout because I'm like that's how like I'm I'm not I'm not locked in. But other times it's like yeah I'll sip on it as I as I work out or I'll, I'll drink a little bit like before the workout, I'll get through the workout and then, you know, I'll drink the rest after. So I have a little bit of a kick right after I'm done working out or it, it's never, it's rarely ever. Is it a, Oh, I'm going to eat all this. Yeah. I almost, I almost thought about doing the Aerios. Do you know, remember uh, what the oh Aerios is? No, no, yeah, I know what the Aerios is. No, no. I you might have died. You might have just died right there. Yeah. I was like, should I Aerios this shit? And I was no. like, no, that sounds, I was like, that sounds crazy. Which, by uh, the way, I'm looking at it. Go ahead. Aerios is terrifying. I want everyone. Yeah, he is quite literally built different. Well, I you should be to, studied. I don't know if you, I don't know, I don't know if you heard about this fruit, but I actually did a class with Aerios. And, no, I did not. Uh, it was um, he he came to my gym. And it was great, but this is a beast. He's terrifying. Also, when you see Arios in tighter clothes, this dude is literally built like a brick house. I'm usually used to seeing Arios in like his <gasps> usual, like his. <laughs> I'm usually used to seeing Arios in like his normal, like I hate you, audio listeners. You, <laughs> Mister Fruit, is on one today. Uh, uh, if you knew Arios, you you wish you could see it too. He did right? the Leonardo DiCaprio thing from Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> Margaret Robbie, who that's all I'm saying. Uh, but I'm used to seeing Arios in like baggier clothes, like the comfy shit. And then like he came to the gym, and this dude is just. I was like, holy fuck, Arios is literally terrifying, but he's insane. Yeah, that dude is nuts. So I have here the exact uh, content amount of caffeine in one scoop because I did one scoop. Uh, one right, scoop has go. two, 237.5 milligrams of total caffeine. Oh, my God. And uh, two scoops is 475. You freak. That's that's a two lot. Two scoops. Oh, my. I think I would literally have a cardiac arrest. Uh, same. I think I think I would die. And I think I was. I, I really think I was. I think bro was like, oh, dude, this new dude, oh, he's going to fucking love going to this. Sh I think maybe, you know, sometimes the bro it's, dudes don't always know. It's like, a, you know how there's yeah. girl math? There's bro math. And he gave you <laughs> yeah. bro math. Yeah, I'm out. So I'm out 50 bucks with this pre-workout. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to my liquid you, IVs. You learned an and, important, and advanced important message, though. You learned. I I think I've told this story though. I tried like an actual pre workout once, and I was very careful. I chose one that was like actually FDA approved because ninety nine. This is how pre workouts work. They make a pre workout, file mm -hmm. it for FDA approval, and sell it within those like first two years because the FDA approval is really slow. Oh. And then they get denied, so they stop selling it, and then essentially just create a new one, call it something new. But it's pretty much the same thing, and then they do the same thing. That does like, make sense because there's literally it's just like an opening revolving door of yeah. flavors. It looks like, but and then like you can't get it anymore. At some scary. point, you can't get it anymore. Yeah. So I got like an FDA approved one, well regarded or like well reviewed and stuff. I was like, I'll try it. I did a quarter or half a scoop of that, and it was only like 150 milligrams of caffeine or something. It wasn't like crazy. The half scoop I took. Brother, when I tell you I was vibrating, it's like <laughs> I was, and it, it wasn't like, oh, this is good. This is like, this is terrifying. And I was like floating in the gym for that whole day. I've never taken anything since. Um, and it's why I pretty much only drink one thing of advanced stuff the whole day. That's a hundred milligrams for an entire day. And that's also why I sip on it. Because if I take any amount of like focused dose of caffeine, that's more than just like sipping. I think I'm already sensitive, bro. Yeah, that pre-workout stuff. No, it's not for 
not for most people yeah i don't think and, and I think if you're I ever gonna try it start small like that like a quarter scoop because believe me you're still gonna and then work your way up yeah the people who are just like uh, shake well i was like never bro, i've been i was like, i've been i have drank 10 mountain dews at, at a gaming session like what's <laughs> fucking 400 like that's well that's the shit. other thing too though is like when i think about it too i was like oh i've drink it but those 10 mountain dews you're sipping on it and so you're getting that caffeine over hours yeah that's why it's dangerous too to just chug it yeah back. i just i slammed eight mountain dews in a matter of 30 seconds <laughs> yeah. i really did uh so, but scary. I, li- I made Cindy a promise which she goes she literally shook me before i left she goes don't overwork yourself and hate your life and give up later and i went <laughs> you're right so i literally like felt the pain i couldn't do it anymore i was like i just need to leave like and then i was like sure did i get the crazy workout that i really wanted to no but i'm here and the next day i'll wake up a little bit sore and i but i won't feel like dead and then i will go again when i can and my body feels good which is today well and think about it this way that one workout you did maybe you didn't get the workout you wanted or as much as you wanted but you worked out more than you have in like what the last year in one day probably That's how you yeah. to look at it it's not like I only got this much. It's I did this much, and that's more than nothing. That's how you put it. Proud of you. Minus the pre workout. Don't take that anymore. Yeah. Oh, that, that, if, hey, if, you, if there's a gym bro out there that really loves skulls, I'll give it yes, to you. For free. I'm not even joking. But hey, no. I don't want you dying on my watch. So you have <laughs> yeah, to true. sign a thing that I'm, says I, I'm, I'm willing liable. to die. Yeah, that's, that's bizarre. I mean, they're just trying to get that's weird because whenever I went there, there were. They didn't try to sell me anything. It was like 15 bucks a month. There's like, hey, you got cash, sweet. And then that was it. Damn, um, 15 a month? Do you want to know how much it is now? How much? Just guess. Like, uh, if you had, like, that facility, the things that are in there, how much would you assume they're charging these days in 2014? What were the, I, $15? That's what, 2016 or 2015? When you were 20, there? 16. Yeah. Okay. So about eight years so I, ago. I would say they're they're like twenty five. Uh, try forty five. Forty five bucks uh, a month. Unless they've changed anything, I am hard pressed to think that that is. They do have again, a I thing don't know. on the. They have a. I'll, maybe I'll show you or send some pictures to kind of see how different it is these days. Um, but I I, I like it because um, it's the one like underneath the stores and stuff. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. By the apartments. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's because like the thing is, I'm going to 24 hour, like super 24 hour, whatever. Yeah. Like 30 bucks a month. Yeah. And they've got lockers and pool and basketball courts. Yeah. And- this has still no lockers, still no <laughs> pools, still no <laughs> anything. I think the bathroom, I would probably never use it. I saw a door in a corner that like right. I would never, ever go into. That's bizarre. But, but that's also yeah. going to say, I'm trying to remember. I can't think of too many options because like another one was like you could use the college campus, but you have to pay it. It's super expensive. And then it's just yeah. busy, Each. stupid busy. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember that's also why I went, you didn't have a lot of options. So maybe that's why they mm-hmm. upcharge, but. And it's like maybe relatively close to where I live. So it's like far enough where it feels like a little bit of a drive, but not far enough where it's like, oh God, I got to, because it's snowing right there. now. Yeah. It's snowing right now, but with the, it's literally turn right, drive straight for about three minutes, turn right, I'm there. Like, I should have no excuse. Well, proud of you, Rob. Yeah. Hope it goes well. Pace yourself. Um, speaking of pacing yourself, I don't know. That's pretty much all the, the topics that Moro's had. Oh, yeah. uh, Avatar got renewed for season two and three. Uh, Still haven't seen is that a any good thing or a bad one. thing? I, I think it's a good thing for me because I think it gives him a chance to take some of the criticisms of the first one. I, it's uh, almost there. It's almost there. It's just like it really lacks the fun of Avatar. Like it's so serious. It's so we have to save the world. And it's like that's not real. You know that misses the. Uh, it misses a lot of the, a lot of what makes Avatar great. That being said. The core of it, good. You know, it's a solid six out of ten show. I hope they fix. I hope they pull. I mean, I think it's a much better base to start with than like the Halo DVD. You know what I mean? Like, 
Although, funnily enough, I've heard season two, aside from a few things, has been more redeeming. So more to your point, like maybe season two of Avatar can do the same where like changes a little bit and you really start to see. I'll be interested to see how they uh, uh, bring in Toph. Um, but I've been told too, if I'm going to watch it, just like don't expect it to be the show exactly and you'll enjoy it a little bit more because like I'm going to be coming into this like people come in as like I've read the book you know yeah and then they're like well this isn't like the book so maybe I'll just try and approach it with like a appreciate it for what it is or try to appreciate it for what it is I think it's a great show if you've never seen the original Avatar like if you've never watched the original Avatar or have like no reference point with the comics you probably think damn this is a good show so well, and it's nice, even just for the people watching it, knowing that they'll get the whole thing. Like, the fact that it wasn't just renewed for two, but three means you're going to get the ending. Like, that's my biggest gripe with these shows, especially Netflix. You get this cool one, but, ooh, can't wait to see how this all wraps up, and then never gets renewed. Or, like, it's up in the air if it's going to... So, it'll be easier, too, knowing if I watch it now, like, okay, there will eventually be an end. Like, this whole thing will be wrapped up. Um, something I did want to kind of touch on to get a little bit more clarification. Uh, did you guys see that Nintendo is taking down users ah. and Citra? Yeah. Uh, now Which are emulators for people. Yeah. Switch emulator specifically is the one they went after Yuzu. Uh, and it's specifically the one we use for uh Ultra Sun and Moon. And our well, no, and we, our, well, we use Nintendo. Well, DS we use Star. Citra. Yeah. Well, see, here's the Citra. thing is. Yeah, what's um, well, Citra's um, possibly or talking about how like they're having to be a little careful, or I think they might be stopping. Um, well, Citra like put out a thing and it basically just says, like, uh, we write today to inform you that Yuzu and Yuzu support of Citra has been discontinued effective immediately. Now, I don't know how deep that goes. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with how Yuzu is supporting it, but I know it's impacting Citra. Um, but the important thing to note is like when we're like, oh, you know, we're using our 3DS, we're just memeing because. The reality is emulators are not illegal. And that's the whole thing where like this. They are not illegal or they are illegal? No. Emu- emulation is not illegal. Now obtaining okay. ROMs illegally is illegal. Because like the thing is as long as you own the game, like the license or whatever, you have the physical copy, emulation is not illegal. Um, like because you could take the game and then you unpack it or whatever and then put it up and you have your ROM and then you can emulate it. So they went after Yuzu, who's a switch emulator. Um, and Yuzu ended up bowing out before going to court, paying like $2.7 million or something. And it would appear that even though they might emulation and it's been legally, it's a legal precedent that like emulation is legal. What they're talking about is it's a good thing. They like, they, maybe possibly took one for the team so to speak um because one there trying to fight nintendo's play. legal battle yeah is insane but also because there's a small chance that they could have won and changed the precedence for emulation so rather than even risk that they settled outside of court shutting down but it also came out though apparently that part of the reason was cuz they were talking about how like um, Yuzu was like making money off of um, yeah they were paywalling for illegal stuff right some of the ROMs and so apparently there was like a Patreon tier or something that behind Maybe that paywall kingdom. yeah was something with like Tears of the Kingdom or like better support or like something that was gray and no longer something just paid like for, emulation or something that they you know didn't make type of thing yeah. so so obviously that's going to piss Nintendo off. So there could have been a lot of different reasons. Like we only know the what we see, but uh, it would appear Nintendo specifically too probably had something else other than just your emulating to go after them. Yeah. And then, yeah, the, the theory is that then they could have also hit emulation as a whole. Um, either way, like we don't quite know what this will mean. Um, I mean, people have already forked the Yuzu before it got taken down and stuff, so we'll never really be able to stop it all, but depends yeah. on, like, how um, 
like back door, like weird. Yeah. I have to get about because technically, I guess if you're in like Russia and China, it doesn't matter. There's no rules or whatever. So they can do whatever they want. I forget the countries, but I I just imagine Nintendo's like, like imagine like Citra and them as a fly, and it's kind of just like sitting on. They're like, "Eh, like that's kind of weird. And then like all of a sudden they're like, "Yeah, but like it don't pay attention to that fly. It's not doing anything." And it's like, "Wait, that fly just made like what we make in five seconds." Yeah. (laughs) Well, well, the thing is, the thing is, what I'm betting is they as soon as Yuzu, as soon as the Yuzu creator started a Patreon. Nintendo was like, yeah. and we're locked <laughs> in, boys. Yeah. Well, I mean, because like they kind of, because they kind of have to, because I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> use it, while they did make, while they did, you know, they did develop an emulation software. It's still a Switch emulator, so they're going to be like when it was just a normal emulator, they're probably just like, oh, whatever. Like, yeah, em- like we're not gonna be able to stop emulation. People are gonna make emulators and gonna get robust and like, what can we do about that nothing but then they start the patreon and they're like hmm so i see you've decided to try and make money off this well <laughs> i hope oh, you know old. we hmm, your time is limited and they probably would have been fine the patreon already is a little bit of a gray area but they probably would have been fine if they didn't start yeah doing that paywall stuff that paywall was literally like you only it's one strike you just need one strike one wrong move uh-huh. of what can be perceived as making money off of their ip and that's that's all you need to take a Jove. you know to legally take them down because i mean emulation is already like hey like you're doing something that we haven't actually uh you know greenlit and now oh you're making money off the thing we didn't greenlit uh, and then it's it's just it slippery slope where it just goes downhill so quick. It's it, yeah. I don't know. It, it is a little naive to me that they even decided. You know, as an emulator, you're already in like you know you're already in the hot seat all the time. To for it is very naive to be like, hey, like so you could get you could this support in tears of the kingdom if you uh become a patreon uh you know a tier three patreon sub it's like oof if playing is- you're you're in a volcano playing with like the molten rocks and you're just like damn nothing ever nothing bad could ever happen to me yeah because the idea was at first without knowing anything if like you're an emulator or you're developing an emulator can't take money yep and the thing is, um, never solicit, help people where they can get ROMs, nothing like that. If you don't do those things, you're Kill clear. Kill and the Patreon could have been clear too. It could have been like gray, but on the legal side, if it's just support the Patreon to support like us developing it, but yeah. like it's not, Yuzu isn't stuck behind that paywall. Like YouTube yeah. or Yuzu can still be downloaded, but it's more just like, I'm supporting the devs separate. Yeah, you know, exactly. like you can get away with that. But as soon as you, I don't think they ever did ROM soliciting, but then I think that's where some of the, the apparently the Zelda thing, that one little thing, and that's just it. It's all it yeah. takes. It's a little bit of greed. But it's just a little greed. something about, I don't know the details, but something about the Tears of the Kingdom went over that line and blurred it. And especially with Nintendo's, uh, baby warrior like, team like, like you you have to know you you have to know you are yeah you are constantly under the magnifying glass of nintendo yeah so that was a, you know that was a play and the play that did not turn out well for them land people are also guessing to that copium whatever that like switch to is supposed to come out next year oh. um but if it is that it won't be like drastically different in the sense that like it didn't take too long to figure out how to emulate switch and they've gotten way better at it now so if the switch 2 isn't drastically different then emulation for that would be super fast and then that's when they'd be worried about people illegally getting roms and blah 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 and that's also a theory but either way it's yeah. unfortunate but also as an outsider we have so little information um yeah. so it's hard to really say what's going on there um Bummer either way, but like the true loss would be if a precedence on emulation got yeah 
got changed because that's yeah that would be, be whack and that would be just the lot of lost media i mean it would be tragic because you know when it comes to these companies like the people who make these games don't really have a say in the legal battles right like it's really just nintendo saying hey these are our ips without any regard for the fact that hey a lot of these games being emulated like you we live there's literally nowhere else to play them so yeah it would it would have been tra- it would have been tragic so shout out to the user dudes for i mean essentially yeah taking one for the team I mean, yeah the settlement means but like they also like made it happen like they yeah they, they, so they that's took true. one for the team but they fucking had they, to they, they took didn't, that's like... true they were like they were like if us paywalling some stupid part of a rom would have cost the entire western world's emulation status well we don't want to be those dickheads that ruined yeah. it for everyone else so we almost were so let's not like be that fully um we'll switch on over here to some q a uh we got like 15 minutes left uh jimmy says uh if y'all could make a single player game multiplayer what game would you choose pokemon <laughs> uh, <laughs> which pokemon? i agree i agree yes <laughs> yes i mean technically we the joke is we have online but i mean do we really like and i mean we got co-op with scarlet and violet but i'm more so just talking about like the mul- true multiplayer pokemon i've always wanted we got power uh, world and now we want a taste of the real thing otherwise i don't know i'd have to think because like a lot of single player games i think would be made well, worse I- yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. That's just what I'm trying to think too. Well, I think uh, Assassin. I was gonna say Assassin's Creed, but I do think Assassin's Creed did have some sort of multiplayer they game. A, they got where, a PvP mode. Yeah, it was like you you'd run. It was pretty cool. I forgot about that. I think it'd be I fun like it. to like co-op with um, like Ghost of Tsushima, which is also coming out director's cut on PC in like a week and a half. If you have not played that. You got it. I'm probably going to get it replayed on PC. So sick. Anyway, that would probably be one of them. It does have a multiplayer section, though, I will say. like a Well, a, a but I'm talking thing. like the, the single player. Yeah, you're the open world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be the contrarian here. I don't think there's any single player game I play that I would want multiplayer of that, you know, most of the games that are multiplayer or games that were single player that had multiplayer tagged on are already like you know what i wanted and as time goes on other people will make the multiplayer developed focused version of what i imagine in my head right so i wouldn't want those games to be changed in any way for the multiplayer so i I, I would say there's probably nothing at the moment I know a lot of people uh, have always wanted Elder Scrolls, and there's been a certain team trying to make that mod forever. Uh, same thing, like, again, I, I don't necessarily, I haven't played them in either way, but I know a lot of people wanted, like, uh, Zelda multiplayer, and, like, Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild. So I think there's some instances where, like, specifically less story-driven like like God of War, or I don't see how that could type. ever. Yeah, I don't see how like a lin- more linear based story game. I don't think would benefit really from, but like more open world adventure, or yeah. like Skyrim, um, or like Zelda, where like a lot of it is what you make of it. I think those could benefit more, but yeah, yeah, I'm struggling to think of. My vote was probably like Ocarina I'd of play. Time or like. Tears of the Kingdom, some sort of Zelda type game where you could just co-op with a friend or something. There's a lot of like, so, oh no, okay, well no, I I know one for sure then. Never mind, I lied. Cyberpunk 2077. And that would, would work. That would be sick. That would work. Or not like not even necessarily co-op, but just like keeping the world, but knowing there's other like net people runners, doing their own thing people, in there. Yeah, like, in the world, yeah. Um, that'd be cool, and then you could co-op for some stuff, or like, dude, essentially, it'd be like GTA Online, but Cyberpunk. I I would like that. 
Uh, Mies says, hey guys, you, uh, as always, you guys are my fave. Since Disney dumps so much money into Epic Games, what games do you think uh, they will make from it? Also, Rob, Sora Riku to Fortnite? Probably. <laughs> uh, I probably will buy one of those skins. But I hope, it, I hope he has a signature square dance. Like, see, like, I don't think necessarily about the, like, Epic making some sort of, like, Disney IP. I always just think of the Disney skins coming to Fortnite. Like, I don't know if they're going to try and make Disney-focused type games. Um, or they'll just you know, maybe like, a Fortnite creative thing. Well, like, what was that Animal Crossing game that Disney, like, made? Enchant something? Like, a, it was oh, Dreamlight or some shit? Yeah, Dreamlight. Something Land, like I think that. Yeah. I think like if they do like a Disney Dreamland 2 or something like that, uh backed by Epic or something like that, I think that would be really cool. Um so maybe something like that is something that comes to my mind first. I'm I would have like not even a Yeah. Slide like any, like, um oh that did just remind me though, even though we just stopped talking about it. Speaking of uh Pokemon stuff though, if you're watching, Rob and I have restarted our uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Soul Link, Nuzlocke uh, over on Mormish Fruit. If you want to go watch us torture ourselves some more, going to try and complete it before my surgery, right. but no spoilers. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Joey and Skull came in my chat talking shit like, oh, I hope we beat you guys. And it's like, yeah, you're going to beat us. You guys are like on Boo Boo Keys rules. Like, well, Joey they, goes, well, the typing I'm rule that Mr. Fruit is wrong. stupid. And I go, yeah, that he, doesn't make any sense. Like you're not, we're not playing the same game though. So if you do beat us, congratulations. Well, but the typing rules are like yeah, just needlessly true. insane. But it's not the same game. You're sure you're playing the same game as us, but you're not playing the same rules. So it's not the yes, same. I basically like, am. The only no, one it's I can not. Is the typing it's rules. not. Yeah, and, but the typing fair, rules is what makes, rule it, makes so it easier because you can no, like the typing rule makes it so hard. You no. can choose which one is the weaker pair of the two and then just re-encounter. When the you guys PG beat us, I'll say good Reggie job. Eagles. I'm really proud of you guys. It, I'm if just it's saying, easier, Joey, then just do it. Oh, man, oh, you guys are OK. I'm not. You said the way he just said, there. like, your rule makes it easier. Yeah, that's well, what OK. You, I, that's what he just said. I, I guess I OK, I don't I don't fully mean that. OK, you know, I don't mean that. But like the point is, I'm like. You told me yourself, Miss Fruit, that I shouldn't, I shouldn't have those typing rules in it. Well, yeah, okay. but then if you want to race us, yeah, it's got to be on level playing ground. If you want to enjoy the let's play and your sanity, then I would. I do want to do that. That yeah. was a big part. Of what's what like I was the what's do. that Naruto when he's like fighting and then he takes off like the weights? Oh, Rocky. and then like. Yeah, mm. let's take off our weights, Mr. Fruit, and just do a normal one. No uh, typing. Well, okay, okay, but why don't you? Because, because we had this rule. Typing rule. You know it's it's cringe. But I like the typing rule personally because I, I even said it in our video. I like it because you, you get different pairs that you would probably never even think about using ever. Yeah, but I feel like you still get that without the typing rule because it's no. a randomized. No, you block. would be like, oh, I have that mega character. mega Venusaur. And then that's with you know, it just with another this is better than. Yeah, like, that would that's be too the easy. only thing, though. Is that easy? You think that's easy? Well, because if you don't have to worry about pairings, then you can just be like, all right, well, I'm going to make sure I have like fire or yeah, like fire, water, grass and dragon. And then you'll just make sure you have like the same and we don't really have to worry about it. And then we just have these uh, strong ones. And I'll, I'll I'm just say about I, it, man. the reason I why know. I'm still doing it. Well, I'll tell you, Joe, it's because I'm stubborn. I made the rule and we're going to beat it. That's why I, I know. Yeah. I know, which is why I'm glad like I. <sighs> Like so like, if you guys are saying like, a race, then you have to be on the same rule set. That's all I'm saying. Like, don't call it a race if you're not on the same rule set. And now, I'm not so telling you, I want of. you to be on the rule set. Play and have fun. Uh, like that, play and have fun. That's well, Rob I if he's been having fun. Set. Yeah, Rob, you guys have been really having fun for the last six months. Yeah. But, okay, I get all to right. go back into the cave, though. Boop, boop, boop. I, I will rescind my, my critiques. On the typing rule thing, maybe I will talk to Skull. Yeah, and maybe I mean, if you guys want to try it out, it I just I, it just seems like so much to pay attention to that doesn't mm -hmm. need to be paid attention to. But you know what? Well, then you don't. Uh, again, you you're the one that wants to like compare anyway. I'm not. That's why I'm I told you. Yeah, I mean, like I we just, never said we're racing. Started. 
mm. uh, you know, conveniently after I start a, uh, an ultra sun and moon nuzlocke. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. So you I literally I'm did kidding. it after us because we did it. Well, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for having me on. A <laughs> uh, big fan of the, of the podcast. I'll, I'll see you next week. Yeah. <clears throat> have a good one, uh, Slippy Fist. Uh, question for Rob: When you eat a Pringle, when you eat Pringles, how do you finish the last bit of crumbs? Uh, is it similar to eating mixed nuts or a cylinder? Just wondering. Now, I, if I'm done with it, I'll go like this. It's so and dusty. I, I, I'll go like this, and then I'll try and you know, I <laughs> get all of it as I can. Like, you know, if that. You knew what you were doing. You gotta, no. <laughs> sometimes you got to pat the back of it. To you get know what you're doing. Kind of, you know what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Well, what do you think Slippy Fist asked the question for? That's what he wanted. <laughs> I'll give the people what they wanted. Oof. Video video watchers are eating, let me tell you. Holy. Yeah, I never uh, thought Esquire. about eating Pringles like that. That's... Well, first of all, I thought I was like, man, why are they asking me about how I eat Pringles? But then I was like, uh, I get I get what you're putting down. I get what you want to see. Uh Esquire uh says, so working on getting my driver's license lately, only 27. But my question is, what did you wish you knew about car insurance when you started that you know now, if anything? Uh, I mean, insurance is all a scam. So, uh, um, but, uh, oh man, car insurance is crazy though. Like I think, yeah, all I've learned is everything, all insurance is a trap. That's all I've learned. Yeah. Like I think, uh, I think my insurance rate actually just went up $30. Um, I think when Cindy and I officially like married and stuff like that, we're going to go like looking for quotes. Cause I think you get better rates as a married couple and stuff. Um, so, uh, I'm kind of waiting to tackle all that insurance stuff after I sign the, the civic, uh, certificate of marriage, but yeah, insurance just sucks, but you need it if you get pulled over cause you will get fined. And if you hit somebody, sure. you don't want to be paying out of pocket for their car and th- them fixing it. Here's what, okay. Well, it sort of has to do with insurance like that. Get a dash cam. It's like 20 bucks Big. or 25 bucks. I've had it in my car. I've never had to use it, but if anything ever happened, the amount I could save from having dash cam yeah. would be huge. Well, and you also save by having a dash cam in your car. I don't know if you've talked to your insurance about it, but they can even send you one that like that monitors your speed and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. And if you don't mind having a thing in your car, um, it'll knock a ton off your insurance. Yeah, that's all I've got. Uh, we'll do one more question here. Uh, Mark Rousse, uh, what are y'all stances on AI generated content? Um, I have a stance of if you're using AI to make memes, like, okay, let me show you how I use AI. Okay. I'm in a fantasy football league. Okay. My name is o- maximum ogre drive with the picture of Shrek like this. We've all seen it. All right. When I was on my winning tings and I was like 8-0, when I got to 6-0, after every week I won, I would make a gangster. Remember how you'd always see like the gangster uh, cartoon characters with like lean in their hand and stuff like that? I would literally like just type in the AI generation, Shrek with purple drink and a grill in his swamp. You know, I think that is like fine if you're just trying to have like fun with it and make like meme ass content. The second you try and like monetize it and like cut corners uh, by taking artists out of it and stuff uh, is where I start hating AI and thinking AI is very lazy and very dystopian. When you use AI for the fun things like little memes and like very harmless things, I'm okay with it. Yeah, AI generated content, as long as it's not like creative work. Um, Because in the case, especially of like art, um, I'm okay with it if it's learning from things you have permission to learn from. Like, I think I've talked about it before. Like if you're an artist and you just feed AI your art to get your style and then you use that in coordination with your own skills. Sure. My problem is when it's learning from everyone else and essentially taking the work, uh, and benefiting from it like that. Do not like that. It's a very slippery slope. Um, because once you start like replacing creative work and stuff with it, uh, we've kind of talked about it before, but it's scary and starts questioning like what is 
what does it mean to be human and art and all that kind of stuff? And I just don't think that's like AI is here to take over things we don't want to do. How I always thought about it, you know, like an assembly line, why we got like robots out of the assembly lines. Cause like we don't want humans. Just nobody wants to do that. But like the arts, what makes us human and what people want to do and yeah. takes away from way too much other stuff. So, um, the thing about AI generated content though is it, it can be a lot of different stuff though. Like in-house for certain companies can be big or the other thing too about AI is like people think this is something new, but like procedural generation and the way um, AI and video games learning and stuff has all, already been used. It's just the way that it's now hitting um, the like everybody's able to more or less utilize it and the implications especially when you start looking at like the video stuff we talked about the implications of how people will be able to misuse it because that's the problem too is all ai generated content could be great if it wasn't misused but that literally goes for everything in the history of humanity and we always misuse it so yeah um we'll do a really quick question here okay uh wait blue uh, your opinion on AI g- generation? Ah, stop that shit. Uh, we'll do this one because it's pretty. We'll have, we'll have two quick ones. Uh, hyperlethal favorite nostalgic game? Go. Nostalgia. Halo Two for me, like it's the perfect game. That or Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> yeah, I love that game. Um, probably Melee. Nostalgia, 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 nostalgia. Uh, what brings me back? Probably Gen 2. Yeah, I was going to say Melee or Crystal. Probably. Uh, and then the last question here from Lumberlord for the podcast. Uh, help me settle a debate. What's cuter, a puppy or a baby? Puppy. Uh, puppy. Yeah. I would. Puppy, unless it's your baby. That's I feel true. like you always have the other. Like, babies are cute. And you make, but when it's your baby, it's the, I mean, it's, it's the cutest thing ever. I feel like, yeah, I feel like when it's your actual child, it's probably the cutest thing. But when I see a baby, I'm just like, yeah, that's a baby. Babies are cute, but I think as a whole, any puppy you is more usually just like that's the cutest yeah, thing I've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. Babies are cute, yeah. but puppies are adorable. Unless Am I it's weird, I don't think babies are that cute. Well, that's what I'm saying. I look at like most of the part. Well, that's that's exactly what I was. I'm it looks like, like little aliens. Yeah, I'm like I see a baby. I'm like, that's a baby. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is my baby like, adorable? That, that is it's a probably cute pooping baby. itself right now. Like, look at you. Hey, why are you at me like that, bro? Please. <laughs> I didn't want to get up. Uh, I just think about like uh, that baby probably shits. That baby probably keeps yeah. them up at night. That baby probably ruins their life. And I'm like, that is it really worth that little like giggle? Is it really worth it? <laughs> And like, if it's your kid, uh, apparently yes. it is. If it's your kid, apparently yes, it it's yeah. worth it. Uh, well, that question will wrap up the GG Over Easy podcast. Sorry to all the baby listeners out there. Didn't want to, didn't mean to offend you guys. Uh, I'm actually, my I baby is the cutest baby in the world, and um, <laughs> I love that you love your baby. I just don't believe that. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you next week. Peace out. See. You.